it seems that we have decades of research that suggests that conversation orientation tends to produce positive outcomes in children. Why is that? What is what is so great? What is so positive uh, about high co- high conversation orientation that it is so beneficial to uh, to children? Well, the outcomes are really because they really teach children to engage in ways that are culturally appropriate in the United States, right? So in the United mm-hmm. States, we, we, we place particular value on sort of individual individuality. We place particular importance on sort of everybody has a right to their own opinion. And we really, we really express how we value each other very much by how we value each other's expression, whether that be in you know, political opinion or gender expression, or a hobby or whatever we have, right? So it's, it's a lot of different ways in which we express ourselves. And it's very important for us that we value that. So generally speaking, in the United States, in the particular middle-class America, right. this is a very culturally, very, very uh, valuable to have these skills. So kind of turning that around then, uh, for somebody that was raised in a high conformity orientation family, but why might sometimes conformity orientation produce negative outcomes? And when might conformity orientation be be useful to children? Right. Again, it's 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 often interaction with the culture. So in cultures that value uh, authority, that value really is sort of a single source of truth. We could then right. think about highly religious families or high religious communities where there is very a clear sense that there is a there is a fundamental truth out there that needs to be communicated rather than discovered, or where somebody in, somebody in a position of particular connection to to the spirit or or to to the bible or or something similar uh has authority and then gets to define what the meaning of these things are then a conformity orientation is very useful for for a person and to grow up in a family that is much more conformity oriented will be more successful in that environment the uh the disadvantage that in an environment where there is no true answer or there is no authority, these children often get lost. And so we often find some of the negative consequences, uh, maybe not so much to f- directly a function and outcome of conformity orientation, but it's sort of a, an inability in, in, uh, to really make their own choices because they've not been trained to understand how do I make choices and how do, they, how do I weigh off different opinions and different ideas that I have against each other? So how do I recognize what is a good argument and what's a bad argument? And then if I have not have not been trained into this, I often fall in a situation where I might be very susceptible to peer pressure because I really don't know, but my peers seem to know. And I think it's a great idea to jump off that uh, train or whatnot. Right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, I'm more influenced, I'm more, I'm more susceptible to peer pressure. And that's not always a good thing. Some situation it is, but uh, often we also know that that's, you know, where a lot of trouble starts, particularly as parents, you know. <laughs> say, pr- probably better to think about what your peers are saying and maybe debate those ideas a bit before you do that. But that's exactly. you know, the kind of thought process you might have coming out of a high conversation family. You might not for a high conformity family. Mm-hmm. What would you say, say to somebody that would, would make the argument that maybe it's a moderate level of conformity? So I'm not totally squelched by parental authority, but I'm also not just free to do whatever. There, there is kind of a sense of we do have some shared values and uh, such that come down from the parents. All right. I mean, I, I think there's absolutely some truth to that, right? And I mean, even if you really want to talk about family, the family types that come out of the family communica- underlying dimensions of family communication patterns, right? We have been, we, when we uh, divide this up and we have high conversation orientation paired with high conformity orientation, is the consensual family. That's a family where there is a lot of communication. So there's a lot of the emotional support that is inherent in communication and a lot of the training about how to how do I make choices and how to understand to weigh off evidence. That's all included. This is sort of healthy dose of, of authority so that there is sort of a deference to the to the greater experience and the greater knowledge of the parents is, 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 is also integrated there. And often sort of deferring to the parents becomes a shortcut for families if they have to make make easy decisions. And that's really the family type that we know when we break it down into family types rather than the underlying dimensions, that's really the family type that has the most successful outcome for children. Hmm. Unlike the pluralistic type, which is where conversation orientation is high and conformity is low, there's a lot of expressivity in those families and there's a lot of discussion, but also a sense of often of disorganization and, and family members do not come ultimately to, a, to an agreement and mm-hmm. they do their, do, do their individual ways and, and do the individual things. And, and uh, actually because nobody's persuaded by anybody else in these families, 
there is also a sense of isolation and not quite the closeness that you have when you achieve agreement. Um, so it's really not that conversation orientation always produces good outcomes and conformity orientation always produces ne- uh, bad outcomes. Particularly if you combine those two, we really find that, that a, a high conversation orientation combined with a, with a significant level of conformity orientation has the most positive outcomes for children, right. at least in our culture. 